There are two animals that you absolutely cannot do without on a homestead. And I'm not talking about sheep or pigs or goats or cows or chickens. And there are huge benefits to having both of them on your homestead. We're going to talk about all of those today. Come on. You're going to be on camera. Come on. There you are. Well, of course I'm talking about dogs and cats. This is Duke, he's my five-year-old Border Collie. Um, border Collies are a little odd and you really need to know how to handle them, but he's a great dog. We're gonna talk about the benefits of having a dog on your homestead. What you doing? You all tuckered out? You doing all right, floppy tongue? What is this thing? What is this thing? And of course, the other one I'm talking about is a barn cat. This is Linksa, and she's four years old. I think it's fairly obvious why you should have a cat on your homestead. Rodents. They take care of rodents with no problem at all. They love to catch mice and eat mice, and that is going to save you money. How? Well, rodents really get into your livestock feed. And no matter how well you secure your livestock feed, rodents are always going to find a way into it. So... Having a barn cat around is really gonna save you some cash. Now they also will eat snakes. Now with one caveat to that is they won't tackle a snake that's too big for them to handle or is poisonous. They know better. Uh, snakes can kill a cat, but usually the cat will kill a snake. So it's kind of a trade-off there. Um, but the snakes will stay away from the property if they know there are cats prowling around on the property. I find dead baby snakes all the time. Now, I like certain snakes, obviously not poisonous snakes, but the other snakes can also eat rodents and small insects. So having some snakes in your garden and around on your property is good. The cats will eat them, so there's kind of a balance going on in that regard because cats also will eat insects. I've seen this cat eat big grasshoppers, some locusts, some uh, crickets, and things of that nature. So they're, they're great for pest control for large insects. It's really a cool thing. So in addition to taking out snakes and mice, which are probably the two most pesky things on a homestead, although there's some other things cats will take out that are also pesky, like small rabbits, squirrels, they'll take out birds, they'll take out moles, gophers, voles, things of that nature. Besides insects, snakes, and mice, and everything, cats are a valuable, valuable resource to have with you on your homestead. Now, a really cool thing about having a cat on a homestead is they are really, really low maintenance. Uh, barn cats stay in the barn. You provide them a nice, dry, warm place in the barn, and they will take care of themselves. Obviously, you don't need to groom them. And they require, we still obviously take them to the vet, they require very minimal numbers of shots to be able to stay out here. And that is really great. So the amount of money that it takes to keep a cat on a homestead is not much at all. We still do feed them and you still do need to feed them and water them. And that keeps them around. So they can absolutely hunt and find as much food as they need to sustain their life. But to show them affection, to show them love, which you need to do to keep them around also, give them a little bit of food. You don't have to overfeed them because if you overfeed them, then they're, you're not gonna get a, the benefit from the cat at all. It might as well be a house cat because you want them to be hungry enough to go out and hunt all these things all the time. So a small amount of food once a day, will keep the cat around and it will show them that affection and love that they need and it will still keep them hungry enough to go out and take care of what they need to take care of out on your property. So I probably don't have to mention this, but do not forget to spay and neuter your cats. Why? Well, males for neutering, you want them to stick around. If a male is not neutered, he's going to go and hunt for ladies off your property. And that's going to get them in trouble. That's going to get them in trouble because it's going to get them hit on the road or it's going to get them caught and eaten by a coyote or another, uh, say, wild dog that's been dropped off in the countryside. So. You don't want your cat, your male cats to, uh, to not be neutered. And for female cats, 
we spay ours only after we have a solid number of kittens. Like we only have two female cats left and they're both spayed. And once they are, they die, um, we're gonna have to go find other cats because we won't have any more kittens. But at one point we had seven or eight kittens and then we had to spay or else we were gonna have way too many kittens and cats running around on this homestead. Too many to feed, too many to take care of. Gonna go chase some cars? Good boy, you gonna be a good boy? All right, go get them, go get them. Now let's talk about dogs. Having a dog on a homestead has totally different benefits from cats, but let's talk about some similarities. Dogs, especially mine, who's a border collie, will take out small animals that the cats will also. So he'll take care of rabbits if he can catch them. Um, he'll take snakes out. He has eaten gophers and moles. He, like, he likes to dig for the gophers and the moles. So that's kind of a pain because the cats obviously won't do that. But uh, he also takes care of them. Also rats. Rats, he, he, we had a couple of them in some weird bush. I don't know why they like that bush. It was near the house. He took them out, no problem. A dog does another thing. If he doesn't eat or doesn't attack a small creature, a small rodent or pest to keep it away from the property, just his presence and his barking will keep other animals away. So here is a big example. It's raccoons. We had some kittens killed by raccoons and we had my neighbor's chickens, 25 out of 36 or something like that. A raccoons uh, killed their chickens. This was before we had our dog. Also, if you're in the South, especially in Texas, armadillos. Armadillos are cute. They're cuddly looking, at least I think so, but they carry leprosy, gross. He's kept them away from the property completely. I haven't seen an armadillo near the house in a long time. Now, way over on our other piece of land, I've seen some areas where armadillos have dug things up, but no problem at all. They're over there. They don't come near the house anymore. Now, it's probably just my dog, but he hasn't done a very good job with keeping away deer. He, he, I've seen him play with a deer before. Actually play with a deer, and I didn't catch it on camera. But... <laughs> It's kind of odd. Anyway, uh, the deer have been uh, destroying some of my fruit trees, at least the bucks are, and they're, they're rubbing on the branches and breaking them off, and that's not cool. But he does a decent job with, with keeping them at bay, I guess you could say. Also, coyotes. We have a completely fenced property, and we've got an issue with coyotes out in my neighbor's pasture, which is out there, and they've taken out some calves before. But no coyotes here. I haven't seen any jump on the property at all. Now, one thing you do have to worry about with dogs is wild boar. Like I said, our property is fenced, so we're very, very blessed in that regard. But wild boar out here in Texas kill dogs like, like anything. Uh, we had a couple of pigs get onto the property at one point, and they gave my dog a severe beating. Luckily, he didn't get cut by any of their tusks. So that was really fortunate, but he was pretty bruised up for a good week or so. So when you think about getting a dog for a homestead, you really need to think about the breed of the dog per where you are living, what your situation is, what type of homestead you have. Duke is a border collie. We rescued him, but it was not my intention to get a border collie because border collies need a specific amount of training to be able to do what they do. Now, he's a great dog now, but when we first got him, he was a real pain in the behind. Uh, he didn't listen to any commands. He didn't do anything like that. So I've, I've worked with him pretty well over the couple of years that we've had him. So that brings me to the point of talking about breeds. Breeds are going to be very specific to your homestead in your area and say the livestock that you have. Now, obviously border collies are really important if you want to herd sheep. They're fantastic at it. That's what they do. That's what they're bred for. But he obviously didn't do too well against those pigs and he wants to herd the chickens, which is kind of silly. Um, anyway, 
having, say, a Great Pyrenees instead of a Border Collie in an area where you've got maybe mountain lions is probably a good idea. So you're going to really have to do your research about what breed that you want to have on your homestead and what's appropriate for you. Now, we've also thought about getting a... Uh, uh, Jack Russell. Jack Russells are great at taking out rats, but once we thought about it, the Jack Russell can get out pretty easily through the fencing and the Border Collie, Duke, takes care of the rats with no problem. We're good with just him for now. Now, of course, having a dog, you're going to have way more maintenance and care than a cat. Dogs definitely need to be fed every day, twice a day in my uh, Border Collie's case. They need, obviously, a warm, dry uh, place to sleep, water all the time and a lot of grooming especially if you have a long hair breed now he gets into a lot of stuff here on the property which means I have to take him and get him groomed a lot because that those burrs and everything will just cause him issues you got to keep them clean you got to keep them groomed you got to keep all their obviously all their shots up to date but that goes without saying now it's your choice to either spay or neuter them because out here on a fence property in the middle of nowhere yeah you get a couple of straight dogs every once in a while but for us they don't really come on the property we've had it maybe twice so like i said having barn cats and a dog on your homestead is an absolute must they come with so many benefits in protecting your property protecting your livestock protecting your feed protecting your garden all of those things they can provide for you as well as great companionship so if you're just starting a homestead or you've already moved out on a homestead but don't have any animals yet, I highly recommend getting a dog and some barn cats, both of them. Now go check out this playlist right here, which lists all of our chicken care videos. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye.